Paul's second letter to Timothy. This is Paul's final most important letter. He wrote it from another time in prison, addressing Paul the co-worker, Protege, the young Timothy. We don't know how much time exactly passed since he wrote First Timothy. We can see Paul's age has changed and for the worse. He imprisoned the Rome, which conferred to under house arrest, the mention in Acts chapter 28, and quickly be released from the imprisonment, another long ministry, and then rested again in Toros. Either way, Paul says he's in the middle of the court trial. It's not going well. He's really sure he's not going to survive this one. All this worked out situation, Paul appears to Timothy. It seems like assignment of physicists. He asked him to come with him in the prison. So Paul could pass on the church and planting missions they started. The design is pretty simple. There are two large sections where Paul challenges Timothy first to accept his calling as a leader. Then we comes to Paul to deal with the corrupt teachers that caused problems in Ephesus. After Paul concludes the letter, Paul begins with thanking God for Timothy and his family. Specifically his grandmother Lois and his mother Aeneas, who returns to young Timothy and story of Old Testament scriptures and install a deep faith in the Messiah Jesus. And because of firm faith, Paul offers his first challenge to Timothy, calls to reject any temptation to shame or the good news of all Jesus, or of Paul suffering in prison, announcing that good news. Reason Paul needs to emphasize this negative stigma he gained by frequent times of prison, and many of Paul's co-workers, the fact, doubting calling as apostle. I mentioned two guys, Philegus and Hemrigus, deserted Paul because they were ashamed of being soldiers with Paul, who is accused of criminal now. So Paul asked him to reject any fear or shame to come see him. Paul knows this is a costly free request. It could put to at risk. He asked him that Jesus' grace is source of power, which is really important. You're going to need it because following Jesus is not easy. It requires everything that you have. Paul Lincoln found Jesus there enrolling a soldier who is striving to please a candidate officer. It's like an elite athlete training their body for competition. It's like a hard working education farmer. All this metaphor involves personal commitment to something bigger than himself. It's when sacrifice and their challenges to accomplish a greater goal. And of course, the highest goal is that example is Jesus himself. Because the commitment to the Father, he suffered crucifixion by Romans. And similarly, Paul himself is not suffering in the prison. Hardship and sacrifice are inheritance of Christian life. That's why Jesus reckoned his foundation of Jesus' hope. Paul puts it a short, very powerful poem. If we die with him, then we will live with him. If we endure, then we will reign with him. If we deny him, then we can deny us. If we are unfaithful, we will remain unfaithful, for he is unable to deny in the nature. God's love for rule has opened up a new hope through the death and resurrection of Jesus. And those who take the risk of trusting and following Jesus, God promises vacation and life. And those who reject him, God will honor decision and do the same. People of faithfulness will never be compelled to God's abandoned faithfulness. So Paul comes Timothy to faithfulness, knowing that it may come to it a cost. Paul moves the second half of the letter, calling Timothy to confront the corrupt teachers of Ephesus before he comes to Rome. He teaching spreading the Ephesian church like a cancer, targeting corrupt number of influential women in the church. That's why the wealthy women, the ball, deal with first letter to Timothy. It's not from much detail about teachers about bad theology. Timothy already knows about it. He does give us one hand. His say teaching the resurrection has already taken place. He doesn't know if the teachers were a fallen Greek philosophical rejection or the whole idea of the body and the resurrection. He thinks it's the only really spiritual experiences. It could be simply distorted by Paul teaching about resurrection of life. It begins now through the power of the Spirit. Either way, the problem is that it has been abandoned by the robust the future of resurrection of the new creation. They embrace instead of private, hyper spiritual as a Christian that this connects the day to day life. So Paul calls him to raise up a faithful leaders who are going to teach the real good news about Jesus. 
and share voices and list arguments and results to dating teachers. In contrast, Timothy's leadership team arc to keep main things in the main things. Let me focus on the core story and messages of scriptures. Paul's day, this man primarily in the Old Testament scriptures Paul says, that give you wisdom, leads to salvation, treat the faith, Mosiah as a Jesus, saying the whole point of scripture, tell you a fine story that leads to Jesus and that has wisdom to offer the whole earth. Paul talks about scripture and nature and purpose. He is all scripture divinely breathed, literally God's spirit. The reference is his role in guiding biblical authorities. The world is what God wants to see people to hear. As we the people and sketch it for very particular purposes. There is a useful teaching telling them things I did not know before. It is forever challenging in a face that say believe me, what well, I do not actually live consistent with. It is for correcting me, exposing many myths own ways, thinking and behaving. Useful for training and righteous, showing me new ways of truly human. It's all God's people will prepare for the good doing good. Paul closed the letter to write Timothy that he's probably not going to make it out of prison alive. He asked Timothy to come as soon as possible before winter. He's going to freeze and sell. It's going to be heavy cold that he's leave behind. And, and also the personal doctor that left the Torah, like, which he got arrested. And also mentioned Alexander, who is a shitty, dangerous man that really should avoid. Probably in response to our Paul's recent arrest. Paul concludes mentioned by nearly everyone's abandoned and abandoned in prison. The source of comfort now is the constant presence of Jesus, to answer him and deliver him, even when he dies. And so the letter ends. The letter secretary stands and right there. Paul's very influenced life, mission, Remarked by persecution and challenges, suffering, struggle. Following Jesus involves risk and sacrifice. It means inviting tension, discomfort into your life. These things are not a sign of Jesus' absence. Rather, Paul just discovers a generous Christians after him. Precisely the dark, difficult moments. Jesus' love faithful had become the most technical for Israel. That's what Second Timothy Paul's final letter is all about.